What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we are working on our 1967 Mustang Fastback GT500 Tribute Build. Boy, is that a mouthful. Right now, as I'm filming this, we have six days left until this car needs to head out for SEMA. Little recap on this build. It started out life as a 2019 Ford Mustang GT. We then cut the entire body off of that Ford Mustang GT and put 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback panels onto that skateboard chassis. So we got the side panels on, the roof panels on, built out the hood, front fenders, and the back end. From there we did things like reinforcing the interior and the structure with a roll cage, relocating the gas filler neck to run the Shelby GT500 style fuel lid, upgraded the suspension, wheels and tires, and sent the thing for its very first test drive. Now in today's episode, we've got no front end on the car, we've gotta have a front end on the car. We've got our wheel wells misaligned with the wheels, We've got to fix that. We've got no fender flare. We got to get all these types of parts onto the vehicle and then we got to get the vehicle completely smoothed out, body filled and everything done so it is ready for paint. So let's get started. Before we jump into it, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by War Thunder. War Thunder is a really awesome free to play military action game and it's got land, air and sea vehicles spanning an entire century. And the game is available on PC, Xbox, PlayStation and Mac. Each battle in War Thunder is an epic confrontation involving dozens of renowned and prototype vehicles, either ground and air or naval and air. And War Thunder perfectly captures the scale and action of battle. It's got stunning details detail of locations, realistic sounds, and advanced effects to provide like a full immersion. The game offers equipment from the early 20th century spanning all the way up to present day, and each tank, aircraft, helicopter, and boat is meticulously recreated and unique to operate. And each vehicle can then be upgraded with additional modules like smoke grenades and active protection systems and dynamic armor and a bunch of other ones. And in the latest update, Sons of Attila, they added an entire family of unique Hungarian ground vehicles into the game. In addition to that, the aerial battles have become even more atmospheric thanks to the voice warning systems that have been added, like those in modern fighters. And the graphics have been improved with new visual effects that dynamically change depending on the lighting. And in War Thunder, there are a ton of different locations. From deserts and forests to snow-covered mountains, each map is inspired by real-world locations, and the diverse landscapes and the unique features of the terrain make each unique battle special. So guys, check it out now. Download War Thunder for free using the link in my description. All new players and those players who haven't played in six months or more will receive a special bonus. You'll get rentals for the P40E1 aircraft and M4 tank for a week, along with free unique skins for them, a special decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, three premium vehicles for free, a week premium account, and even more gifts. And you better hurry because the American vehicle bonus is gonna end soon. So hit that link in the top of the description. It's a really fun game. Thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to it. So I kind of realized one thing. You guys have been left out on the whole story of how did our front bumper come to be? What exactly is it? What inspired it? All that stuff. And it's really important to me because this is a Shelby inspired build. This is not a replica of the movie car, which the movie car is a Shelby inspired build heavily as well. I'm gonna try and keep this short but sweet. With the movie car, the designer took all of the areas that Shelby had customized on his GT500 and put a slight twist on them. That's why I've always said that without the GT500, the movie car could have never been. And it's more GT500 than it is movie car because he only put a slight twist on everything. So what I wanted to do in this build is rewind that slight twist, start with the GT500 and do our own slight twist on each part. So it's inspired by Shelby's GT500 but from there, all the slight modifications are just coming off of our own brain. So I started by designing this thing and I had a really good idea of what I wanted and then I started bringing it into using AI to create a rendering. I got a rendering just like this one right here. This has all of the elements, all of the pieces that I wanted by using iterative design with AI. It's really easy. Now the color's not gonna be red, but that's beside the point. So you've got the stock Mustang, then you got the GT500 and then our build is just the next evolution of that. Every part is either just from a stock Mustang, from a GT500 or a GT500 part that's slightly modified, inspired by Shelby's design. So when it comes to the front bumper, this part that just magically showed up when we started 3D printing, it's like, how did it come to be? Well, I worked under the design, I iterated with AI a million different times to get one that I really liked and I wanted it to be inspired by Shelby's GT350 front bumper. The idea of like an added front valance, which is the really common thing that a lot of builders do nowadays with modern touches on muscle cars. So I kind of wanted an integrated front valance to make that whole bumper just look a little bit more modern. And the idea is for that to pair up to a Shelby 
GT500 headlights around. So I tweaked it a million different times with AI and I got one that I really liked. So the movie car bumper and my front bumper are both inspired by the GT350 front bumper. I've found that basically every part that's on the movie car is inspired heavily by either the GT500 or the GT350 of that era. So the part that I'm really proud of is I then took that reference image that I had and from by hand, from scratch, 3D modeled that full front bumper. Looked at that reference image and I've never done a part to this size, to this scale, by just 3D modeling it off of a reference image. I'm so happy that it finally worked out in the end. I was super nervous. I spent a ton of hours on this. This was wake up at 5 a.m. before we came into the shop and try and bust this thing out. And after like three days or four days of working on it, I was able to get something that was good. And that's how our front bumper came to be. So it's inspired by Shelby's GT350. The idea is with a little added front balance. So that's where our front bumper design came from. That's how our rendering came to be. And this is the car that we got to build. And right now we've got a lot to do on this front bumper if we want to make it work. This is going to be like unwrapping a present on Christmas day if the box was full of razor blades. Dried up fiberglass edges are extremely sharp. But where we left with this on the last episode was we very hastily threw a bunch of fiberglass on here, uh, peel ply, breather cloth, hit it with the vacuum bag. The vacuum system worked amazingly and sucked all the edges down and I was really happy with the way that it, it looked. Now uh, we left it overnight. I turn the vacuum pump off and that's where we are today. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, carefully unbag this thing and uh, start to peel all the layers off and see what we have underneath. This is a huge make it or break it moment. At, at this point, if we don't get the fiberglass on here well, we're pretty SOL on this build. And it means we definitely won't get to run our own custom front bumper. So I'm really hoping this works. All right, guys, bad news, but it's not super bad. We're not totally hosed yet. Two things happened that were unexpected. We, we are brand new to this. This is stuff we've never done before, so we have to you know, try our best and learn from our mistakes. And here's the mistakes that were made. We put three layers of fiberglass down and it is just not thick enough to hold its own shape, really, even. It, it's like, it's kind of bubbling up over here. It's, it's almost there. But it's not thick enough that if we got the plastic off from behind it, that it would it would be the perfect shape of the bumper. Um, we expected this to be strong enough. Well, here's what we expected. It's two different things. Sorry, Oscar's drill in the background. But what we expected was the fiberglass to bond to the plastic and be one piece of the plastic. I thought that plastic was going to live underneath there forever. Uh, and it, it will not. The plastic really repels. So the resin sat on top of it and it just wants to pop right off. So that wasn't a lifetime solution. And then, so I thought, okay, take the plastic out from underneath it and we'll reinforce the fiberglass from the backside. But unfortunately, we just laid this thing up too thin. So we have two options and we're kind of limited by time. One option would be to, uh, by the way, these things aren't separating without destroying one or the other. We can either take the plastic out from inside this bumper right now, destroy the plastic, or we can take the fiberglass off of the plastic right now and destroy the fiberglass. So we could take the fiberglass off, destroy it, and build a mold out of this. Problem is then it takes a day for the mold to dry, then we put the fiberglass in the mold and it takes another day for the fiberglass to dry. Plus getting the mold supplies can be a little sketchy to buy, you know, next day on hand. That's a lot of order stuff on the internet stuff. The other option is that we continue to reinforce this fiberglass and then we destroy the plastic underneath it when we do the removal. And that is the option that we're gonna move forward with because of time constraints. It's gonna allow us to lay up another round of fiberglass, vacuum bag it, verify that it's thick enough, and then just pop the backside out. It's gonna destroy the plastic version of the bumper, but we will have a good fiberglass version of the bumper. And that's only one night of drying up, which is obviously faster than two. So that's what we have to do. We've got some really, really hardcore chop strand fiberglass mat, two layers of this stuff, if that doesn't do it, I don't know what will. This stuff is hardcore. So we're gonna do two layers of chop strand fiberglass mat over this whole thing, vacuum bag it once again, and send it. We 
we got this thing going. I think we got a little bit too much resin in our fiberglass, which is, it makes it like a fraction amount weaker, but it's not really that big of an issue. Um, but the vacuum is going good. I'm feeling good about this. I think we're back. I feel like we're steadily back on track. This is a lot of fiberglass that we got on this now, as far as like the thickness of the buildup of fiberglass. So that'll be a good bumper as long as everything dries up. Well, if we get a nice hard product out of this, we'll have a product that we can use. And uh, that's what we're all about. So happy about that. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and get some sound deadening on the roof with a Be Quiet sound deadening. A uh, bunch of sound deadening on the roof panel and then we'll get the panel back on here and start welding it out so we can start looking at body filling this gap. The manufacturer sends the roof like this. So it's got this little uh, divot or gusset so you can weld in here and then you body fill over it and make it a nice, seam, uh, nice seamless transition. All right guys, it's a new day checking in on our bumper and we got it out of the vacuum bagging and places like this are nice and dry, but other places are not fully dry. I'm hoping it's gonna continue to dry up. I'm not really sure why that would be. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe we vacuum bagged it so fast that it didn't give it time to dry. We definitely got enough buildup on there. We got enough fiberglass on there, but we need it to dry more. We're gonna see if, uh, I got a friend that might have some UV lamps we can borrow. And you can see this stuff shouldn't be shouldn't be doing that. It should be like really, really hard and dry. So uh, we're hoping this thing will actually dry up so we can start working it. Uh, if it does, we still might have a chance of running our own custom bumper, but each time that we lose a half a day on this project, it's our odds and likelihood are just going down and down and down. Right now it's a bit of a bummer, but I do think it'll dry up. Back in the B is for body work section of the world. We're gonna start laying down some lightweight body filler in some spots. We're gonna start doing some sanding in some spots. We're gonna finish welding out the cowl right over here. We've got, Oscar just got done um, bridging this gap. We did some hammering, a little bit of metal massaging to make this transition really nice. We're gonna get that going. We're gonna be panel bonding in the uh, rear tail gaps, or tail caps, sorry. And then we'll start flush mounting these into the body as well and start working on the nightmare that is the uh, rear bumper. Basically, we're just looking at any body line that's not right, that's not working the way we want it to, that we can address right now. And we're gonna start body working these things in. Time to do a little update. Side skirt blending in is blending in quite nicely. We're getting really close there. Uh, Oscar's doing a really, really good job getting this uh, corner cap blended all in and everything. It's lining up really nicely with the trunk lid now, and that's getting finished off. As you can see we got fiberglass on these top, uh, top seams there, and Kyle's getting this one going as well. There have been big developments in bumper land and they're not good developments unfortunately normally i'm pretty good with laughing this stuff off but this is this has gotten to the point where it's it's like it's really frustrating so to source the front bumper is really important to me that i did not buy an e-car front bumper i did not want a movie car front bumper or headlights around i wanted either something that was different from that that was modified and owned by a different company or a shelby part a registered shelby part with this being a tribute car so i reached out to one company and they kind of drug their feet for way too long and said oh well we you know the creation time we don't have time before SEMA." so i said okay so then i set up the 3d printer and we started working on our path down that and that is in the glowing red tent back there, which I'll show you in a second. So that's plan A, plan B, plan C. Order movie car parts from Mexico, have them shipped here, modify them so they no longer look anything like the movie car parts, run those. That plan falls through. Plan D, back up plan D. Yet another company, really, really expensive parts. And the story is basically, you know, hey, we got this, it's gonna ship, it's gonna get there on Friday. Today is Thursday. So I'm like, hey, checking on the tracking, I look at that, it says it's arriving Friday the 27th. We load into SEMA on the 28th. Took the parts that they had that could have got to us 
and now they are in the hands of FedEx and we're never gonna get them and they are definitely gone until after SEMA. So now we're completely on our own. We've had four other plans fall through and now it's, you have to make this crazy 3D printed front bumper thing work out. And uh, kind of looks like Stranger Things in here. Anyways, it's not working great. Um, we put a ton of resin on this and I don't know if it has to do with the amount of resin that we got on here or what we did. We put a ton of fiberglass on here and we accidentally put a little extra resin, not too much extra resin. And this resin is still tacky. So I've been Googling different tricks and different things you can do to harden up resin. We have been heat lamping it and cycling it and that actually has been working. So we've been able to um, get parts that were tacky uh, to be hard. So that's good, but somewhere like some of this stuff, oh, it's hardening up. So it has been using up a lot of our time processing this. And now with this huge layers of fiberglass on here, it is not nearly as smooth and as uniform as we had it before. So there's gonna be a lot more post-processing, a lot more work to be done on this. But I think, I think, I really hope we're gonna be able to make this work because this, this is our only option. If we wanna run a cool looking, custom, more modern looking front bumper on this vehicle, this is our only option. Backup plan. It's not the worst backup plan in the world, but we'd take Oscar's front bumper, uh, headlights around, front grille, all these things, and we would, we would start working them. We'd work them a little bit and customize it a little bit more, and that's what we would run. The hood, though, is a Shelby-style hood, and the Shelby stuff has about an extension of like this much, so the hood would stick out to like here. So we'd have to trim the hood back, and it's, it's not stuff that we want to do. We'd rather do it right. So we're gonna try and make that front bumper work. And then let's talk about the headlights around. So a Shelby headlights around comes off the car about this far. The headlight sits in the bucket a little bit deeper. And then this comes out to meet the Shelby hood, which meets about out here. And it has much more of an aggressive angle. And then it runs, runs through. So to do that, I tried to 3D print it. I modeled it off the same video game car that we modeled the front bumper and I 3D printed it all. And here's a few of the pieces, they, they join up like this. And um, when we went to test fit this, uh, this headlights around the buckets part of it onto the car, unfortunately the geometry in the game that I set my, basically the, the hood line and the fender line, the, the geometry that I designed that around, it was totally off. So if you make the angles work to where this is like supporting and ready for the hood, it's just completely wackadoo and will never fit on the car and, and look right. So we have some options. We could take a 3D scanner. We could scan this, hope we get a correct scan. I could jump into the computer. I could 3D model it. And in about 35 hours or so, I could have a plastic version of it. But as we've seen with the fiberglass process, it's not really working out and going super fast. So I'm very hesitant to go off and do another 3D model because the speed hasn't really been there. The other option is take the supplies that we have, meaning headlight buckets like this one, like that's a brand new one that we had in storage. There's another one over there, 67 headlight buckets, and we modify them to look like a Shelby headlight surround to fit the role. And as of right now, that's our game plan because we, we will be done with body work before the end of this episode. We have to be, and we've got like three days. So that's the game plan. But while I'm waiting for that bumper to harden up, the, the game plan is bumper harden up, start get that test fit on the car. So we're clicoed onto the car, we're getting it in the right area, and then design the headlight bucket around that to make sure that we're matching both of them up really, really nicely. So while that's happening and the bumper is drying, I guess I'll say, I'm jumping into fender flareage world. By the way, Koenig sent us a ton more wheels. We test fit a bunch of them out right there. We're getting even more wheels. Don't you guys worry. I do think that these wheels might look the best in the end, but we've got four other options. Anyways, I'm gonna jump into the fender flare world and start to get stuff clicoed onto the car and get it where I want it to be before we panel bond it on. The goal is to flare out the fender a little bit, bring it out to cover up the wheel. Also by moving this wheel arch a little bit inboard. But do keep in mind, Mustangs have a larger opening in the front than they do in the back. Flare in the rear should be a lot easier. We're just gonna throw that thing on there and clico it down. It should be pretty good. Fender flares are clicoed in. You can see how we are able to move that the optics of the wheel arch, we're able to move that in a little bit. And then this one's all centered up as well. These are gonna take a good deal of work to fiberglass in. First we panel bond them to the metal and we fiberglass them in. That's just basically mocking up placement. There's still a lot of work to go on both of those. I wanna wait till Kyle's done with his side skirt though before I 
cut it up and move it. Next up on the list is some scoopage, Shelby scoops. So Shelby invented the scoop that goes up there and the scoop that goes right there. It was really important to me that we get Shelby licensed parts for these. So that's what this is. This is a Shelby licensed reproduction scoop. And uh, it's the first part that literally just bolts onto this car, which is really nice. Now we got to do a couple mods to it. We're going to put a grill right here and a grill right here. Then we're going to come up to the car and we are going to block it off. Now these scoops probably were to scoop air in back in the day. And uh, oh, I know they were because the interior paneling has an open and closed slot on the venting there. Um, so they scooped air into the car, but now that we have AC and all that good stuff, we don't need that. So we're going to be blocking this off, leaving these bolt holes so it can still bolt in and then adding a little bit of grills for cosmetics in here and they will be ready to go. The Shelby side vents have been grillified. Got the grills in there like that. And then the car has had those uh, those holes blocked off. Got some sheet metal in there and got it tacked off. And then uh, what we're gonna do is hit that with a seam sealer and then it'll be hit with steel it to get it all prepared and ready before these things uh, go on, finally. So that's all ready to go. The bumper seems to be dry. Let's go check it out. So it's about 11 p.m. right now and about noon or one, our neighbor let us borrow this heat lamp and we use this heat lamp to just add heat and then let it cool, add heat, let it cool to help the catalyzation process in this resin because the resin was really tacky and it did the job. I'm really, really happy to say everything is nice and hard. So the next step is gonna be to process the edges of all of this and then get the plastic out of here, see what we're left over with. Um, it's, a big, it's a big moment of truth to see if we're gonna actually be able to use this bumper and process it and move forward with it or if it's just a lost cause. a struggle and a half but we toasted that plastic stuff now i do want to mention there is a type of 3d printable plastic that will bond to fiberglass and resin and if if the plastic would have stayed on the fiberglass we would have had a good part there so that's worth keeping in mind for future research and development and creation of parts especially one-off parts. It could be a good thing to have like four layers of fiberglass and then just a layer of plastic behind it. But as I mentioned before, we, we have no more backup plans. This bumper is on our car for SEMA or it's a stock Mustang bumper probably getting stolen off of this car. So we're gonna make this thing work and we're on a good path to making it work. The fiberglass has hardened up. It took 48 hours, but it hardened up very nicely. So I'm not worried about that problem anymore. So now it's time to finish this thing out. It's a little flimsy for my liking. I think once we add the body filler um, to do our smooth coat, it will stiffen it up a lot, I know, but just in case, we're gonna reinforce it some more. So what we're gonna do is key up the backside of this, sand it with 80 grit, um, I bought some better resin that should dry faster and some more chop strand mat, and we're gonna be just infusing the whole back of this with a lot of chop strand mat. Once that gets done, then we can start sanding on this thing and cleaning it up. The second part of the puzzle is the upper headlight surround, and that's what Oscar and I are gonna jump into right now. I started modifying this bucket by cutting out some of the uh, overhang lip stuff. Um, you can see my cut line right there to get it starting to shape up. But we've got a lot of work to do to go from two of those things to something that looks you know, looks the part. The game plan is right now is we're gonna be cutting the car, like I said before, 
right through here and extending this out with steel. So we have steel on steel because this is aluminum. So it's gonna be very hard to work with. It's like 50, 60 year old cast aluminum too. So I don't wanna guarantee on welding to anything to that. I think fiberglassing into it is good, but no welding onto that. So we're gonna be working in the steel area, which this is made out of steel. This is aluminum. No reason we should modify this anyway, though. So steel, cutting this out, extending it forward. So our headlight bucket matches up with the hood right here then this point of the headlight bucket right here needs to match up with this peak right here. All right guys, first move was a success. We cut this uh, headlight ring out, welded in our full support piece in the background before any fiberglass or anything. Moves the headlight bucket out just how we need to. Gets the bottom of it looking at the right spot in the bumper. That's great. It's also at the right angle to meet up with the hood and everything, so that's good. Next thing is, is the hood has a secondary point, so this point is meeting up right. This point is not. So we're gonna be test fitting these back in the car. We're gonna figure out a cut line and how we're gonna try and do this. We're gonna, ideally we would move this point in a little bit or at least keep it where it is. And then we gotta move this part out so it meets up with the hood somewhere around that far away. Fiberglass has been going really, really good. Today is just our day on this stuff. So our, our quick and dirty backup, um, or backing, did really well. This new resin, the blue stuff, is a rock star. It's drying up really well. I should show you the brand. So here's what we were using that I do not recommend. Just straight up Bondo fiberglass resin. Don't recommend that at all. This is the stuff we were using. It looks familiar to me. I think it can be found in most body stores, body shops. That stuff is about one third of the cost more, 30% more, but I mean, saved us an incredible amount of time because it's already dried up, it's already workable where the last stuff took 48 hours and we're not happy with it. Because we're not happy with it and I'm not happy with this finish coat on this, we're gonna do one more layer of fiberglass. We're gonna do one final layer of woven cloth over the front of this piece with the blue stuff, with the hopes that it'll dry up fast enough as fast as the last stuff did and we'll be working with it with body filler by tonight. So Kyle's got this all sanded down um, that's what he's been doing for the last hour or so, is just sending out all the high spots and sending out all the crap. And now it's time for one last little weave and then we're ready to roll. <laughs> is that how many sanding discs you went through? This is the amount of gumminess that we had from the resin and sending that crap off was terrible. Thank you to Harbor Freight for all the sanding discs. We do appreciate you saving us a small fortune. I gotta say, it's a, it's a mixed feeling with us being like completely all in on doing our, our own thing from here on out. No outside support, no outside parts are coming, no nothing. So the downside is, is it, it's taking a lot more time and it's a lot more risk. The good side is, is that we just, we know what we gotta do. We keep our heads down, we stay focused and we just do it. And there's like, there's no alternative. So your brain kind of doesn't wander and say oh well should we just stop here and wait till the parts arrive or anything like that like we're on our own so every time we run into a problem we know just get creative and get over that problem and keep moving on uh, and i'm very happy with how things are progressing so the goal is by tonight we'll be getting body filler on that and then the headlight buckets are moving along really well our upper headlight surround i'm stoked on let's get it finished
It's a new day and progress yesterday was awesome on front end stuff. Uh, I gotta say, we are four, five days, four and a half days from time we gotta drive out. So we gotta get, we gotta get cooking on the body work and maybe try and make up some time on the paint phase. But um, I think we're not in terrible shape. I know this looks terrible for five days before leaving for SEMA, but it's, well, I don't know, maybe it is. Anyways, uh, the bumper got the, the round of uh, lightweight body filler and then you sand almost all of that off. So you can see how we sand until it gets almost transparent to where you can see the fiberglass, using the fiberglass underneath as kind of a guide for how far to sand and then, you know, kind of using your hand to fill out all the flat spots. So all the corners are not done being processed, but the big flat chunks are there and we're gonna be continuing to process this bumper over here. So Oscar can start working on front end safety stuff. So we need to put an actual impact bar, something to tie the two frame rails together in the front here. And then off of that bar, we can start building mounts and things like that for how we're gonna hold the bumper. Headlight buckets have been coming along really, really well. We got our fiberglass reinforced body filler on here and we've shaped them out. We shaped the, the, the extension out. We've shaped this part back in. So we're getting to the phase where it's just gonna be a lot, a lot of sanding to get those things perfectly smooth so you can't tell that they've been messed with. And uh, we're, we're getting there. I'm very, very happy with the shape of how everything is turning out given the situation that we are in. This is not exactly a miracle, but it's, it's pretty awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and get a front bumper being built out. We're gonna keep working on our actual bumper. We're gonna get a front impact bar built out. We're gonna keep working on our actual bumper with uh, cutting the edges sharp and clean and starting to process all the edges on this thing and the corners and then doing the final touch-up work on it. Well guys, it's 8 p.m. on what's supposed to be our last day of body work. Let me show you where we're at. If I had to guess, I'd say we're not on our last day of body work. We've got the rear fender flares panel bonded on the car. We're working on the rear bumper attachment point because remember the bumper is stupidly shaped. Side skirts are coming along really good. Almost done with those. Front fender flares we haven't even really touched yet because they have to join up to the bumper down there. And the bumper has taken a lot of time. We've got it sanded up, hit it with a level of high coat primer. It still needs finished sanding to really, really smooth it out. That's gonna be hand sanding at a, at a higher grit sandpaper and filling in of pits. It's close. I am really, really happy that we were able to create a bumper on our own. Very, very proud of that. And then the upper headlight surrounds, um, it's coming along. We ran out of welding gas, so for the rest of the day, we can't weld anything anymore. We got a front impact bar in, um, but we can't re uh, weld out the rest of the front headlights around. So I think our last day of sanding is definitely gonna turn into tomorrow. But for right now, what we're gonna do is check out how the front bumper looks with the car on the ground and the front bumper test fit in it. You guys, look how good this looks. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Look at, so we got our front end perfectly like level with the hood, how we want it. The distance from the headlight buckets is perfect. Now, obviously, I didn't 3D print enough bumper. We need, we need, we, it'd be great if we had an extra bumper going this way. So that's some stuff that we're gonna have to build and fiberglass in, but we're not worrying about that right now. We also have to finish out our headlights around, but overall, this is absolutely amazing. We 3D printed a freaking front bumper of our own making and it fits the rendering so perfectly. I think the biggest thing on our build is that it, it carries this curve down a lot more and then kicks out. And I think that's really, a lot closer and more reminiscent of the Shelby GT350R that he designed that had the bumper that was similar to this. And I love the look of it. So I'm super happy with how this is going. And, and now we just gotta get this thing over the finish line. Cause this bodywork stuff is taking a long time and getting it 80% roughed out is pretty fast, but we've got, we've got to get to the finish work stage. So what we're going to do now is get the bumper fully, fully attached because that gets glassed into the fenders and the headlight buckets can then get glassed into the bumper. So we got to get everything fully attached, really, really hardcore mounted. So there's no worries of anything cracking or breaking um, on the journey to SEMA or afterwards. Then we can start working on fabricating and getting the fender flares and stuff molded into the bumper and we will finally be close to having all the body parts on the build and finishing body work.
Well, that's it. The front bumper is permanently attached. It has been panel bonded onto the fenders here. It's been bolted on and we built mounts that mounted it on. It ain't going nowhere. So now if we want to remove this stuff, it's a front clip. You remove the fenders, the front bumper, the headlights around, it all comes off as one piece. So we're going to start molding everything together. This fender flare now needs to go into the bumper where it's supposed to meet up. And then we got a fender flare the other side and do the same thing. Well guys, it finally happened. We, we fell behind schedule. We were staying on schedule pretty good and now it starts to feel like a SEMA build. We are a day and a half behind schedule with three days left. So I'm trying to call him back up for the next stage of this build, but let me show you where we've gotten to. And the stressful part of this, I will say is kind of over. There were a few very key stressful hurdles. When we realized we had no backup plan for the front headlights around and the bumper, making sure we could get the bumper to a usable state, that was really stressful. We knocked that one out first. After that, we went over after the headlights around and we've built out a headlights around the way that it's supposed to look. We extended it off the fenders. We've got the connection piece. Oscar just finished building up this trim piece that goes on the inside and it's all coming together looking really, really nice. So. That also, the other big, big hurdle was um, changing our wheel arch so the wheel was centered within the wheel arch. Something that a lot of you guys had commented about and we were always planning on doing. We just weren't really sure how we were gonna do it and how that was gonna work with our bumper, et cetera, et cetera. So what we ended up doing was mixing a little bit of just custom steel work, just bending and shaping steel, uh, using that as kind of a backer to then connect up fiberglass and connect that with the other pieces that we have. And then we went ahead and glassed it in. So now we've got, some, uh, some layers of fiberglass there. We've got fiberglass coming on from the inside and then we're gonna fiberglass out this section right here too. And then we'll start to trim it up and clean it up and we can start then shaping that, that bend into it and that mold into it. So the key pieces of the body are now on the body and we just have to start blending and shaping and body working everything so it looks really, really clean. All the panels all transition nicely into each other and everything looks good. And that is a job I gotta say, I think anybody can do at home. It's a lot of patience. It's a lot of reapplying fillers and, and, and body filler and short strand fiberglass and stuff like that. And then sanding and taking a look at it and see how you think it is and then doing it over again and over again and over again. So it's like, 3 p.m. right now, I think probably 3 a.m., 4 a.m. We'll give you an update and I'll let you know how we are.
Good morning, everybody. It is our last day of this episode and our last day for sanding. We stayed working until 2 a.m. last night, and let me show you how far we got. We got our front fender flares bondoed in, started working the body filler and started sanding it down. We got this gap all filled in. We're starting to work that in so we can smooth everything out. Headlights around. We got the Shelby GT500 side scoop uh, installed there on the side and vented in the front. Now these vents stick out like a sore thumb right now, but once we have the color combo on here, like I said, this car is gonna be black. So black and even darker black and it'll look really good. It'll hide. Moving over to the front, we got our grills. So we ordered two separate styles of grills from customcargrills.com. So we have this mesh over here, which is not very thick. Uh, but it's a nice hex shape and then we have the big boy hex and we originally did the grill with the smaller stuff But you just saw right through it So what we did was a little bit of testing We painted this up in black and then we checked it out and this hides really well and it kind of just disappears into the background So we went with this I really think that the sweet spot for this car would be something right in between of, of that one and that one like the the size of that one with the thickness of this one. So maybe that's something we can get in the future. But for now, if we paint it flat black, once we have the hood on here, it just all disappears. And you'll see that in the final product. So don't worry about that. Right now it does stand out, I agree. We got things like the rear bumper completely finished. We watched um, five seasons of South Park. This is kind of what the finished product looks like for one of these flares as we, uh, after we kind of sand it all smooth and get it all done. There's still some work to do in the side skirt area. Back here, our drop downs to meet up with the bumper are going well. Those are just big hunks of fiberglass now. Well, just like the end caps, these are just big hunks of fiberglass as well. So it's fitting that it matches. So that's going down there. We've got the uh, rear valance holes that we showed you guys. Those are for, um, backup lights so <laughs> a lot of you guys commented that on the last episode I, I knew what they were for I just didn't care we never run those things anyways so that's got a little bit on there and we're going to finish that out and that will wrap up the back end this is very very close it's just got a little bit of glazing putty and coming around here we're working on the other side as well these are really tough because we we actually so it's kind of easy to custom shape your own flare into here but when the metal starts doing it for you, you have to kind of mix and match. And it is a challenge and it might be a little bit of an awkward spot on the car. But man, when you look at a lot of these uh, style builds, there are all sorts of different transitions. Some of them have bumpers that have no defined line and then it just goes into a straight pinned out line on the flare and all sorts of weird stuff. So I'm not too worried about it. We're gonna make it look good. And then the headlight buckets are gonna be our last really big thing for today, obviously they've got a lot of fiberglass on them and they need to get sanded up and cleaned up. And then we gotta get onto the body fill stage and sand them up and clean them up too. So you probably noticed like we did 12 hours from one section to the next section and we didn't get a ton of stuff done. This stuff just takes a lot of time. So, and, and that's actually what we're running out of at this point. We have to have to be done with this by tonight. We're already a day behind schedule and we got to start painting in the next episode. So we just got to do our best, think smart, get a good strategy, lots of sanding, put the hammer down and get all this body work done. You guys, it is 1.30 a.m. We've sanded all damn day, and we still have to paint tonight, but that's for another episode. But the final, the body, is final.
We did it. We pulled it off. Sometimes plan A, B, C, D. Sometimes plan E actually works out. I know you guys are already typing in the comments what you think E is for. Stop it. Stop it right now. We built our upper headlights around. We mounted that. We, we uh, fiberglassed that into the bumper, which all got fiberglassed into the fenders here. Our over flares to move our actual wheel arch over a little bit so we could fit the wheel perfectly inside the wheel arch. Coming back to our side skirts, our, Sel our Shelby scoops. Custom side skirts coming back into our flare. The Shelby GT500 trunk lid and tail lights. We flush mounted that valance right there and you got those lights out of there. And the same treatment on the other side. It looks so good. We have two days left before we have to leave for SEMA. So that means we've got a paint, final assembly, build an interior, all that good stuff that you will see in the next episode. Oh, and see that mountain of wheels? Koenig's got our back. We'll get some new wheels in the next episode. We'll let you vote on them. Follow us on Instagram, BS for Build, if you want to be a part of that vote. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace!